Very cool. Hey, should we do a show? Yeah, we, we only have show. like uh, a little less than two hours uh, to do this. For yeah. I need to get ready for work. So, <clears throat> yep. All right. So go to this, and then I go to this, and then I do this, and then I do this, and a three, and a two, and a one. It's Sunday, June 23rd, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate and Length, episode number two, uh, 513. I almost said 213. We Back in time there. Long Way back in time again. There. Mm-hmm. Oh, 300 episodes that would have been. Jesus. We're, we're all. It's only just about five years ago. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, uh, make me look it up. <laughs> it's like, I need to know the answer to this. Yeah. So it says our st- statistician. Uh, but. Yeah. Uh, so, did you, did you find it? I'm I'm working on it. My computer can only go so fast. <laughs> Damn, I mean, it's just going to a website. <laughs> he clicks. Search. Well, two thirteen. Ah, this is this is the all two thirteen was um, May twenty eighth, twenty thirteen. Uh, so it was six years ago. Six years ago. Six years ago. Mm-hmm. I guess that is right. God, we're old. Wow. 52 in a year. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Sorry. Anyways, uh, so, uh, Gary, uh, what, what what the hell are we talking about today? All right. So, <laughs> we're kind of on a theme this month. In case y'all didn't figure that out. Uh, <laughs> as it. I mean, it's kind of fair enough, considering, yeah. You know, I'm wearing my Proud Out Loud shirt. Right, and, like, so I just picked up... (laughs) We totally forgot to to talk about possibly doing some sort of, like, Pride design for this year, too, but, you know, whatever. Right. (laughs) Well, and that's why, like, I just got this new shirt, which I'm very happy about, made by a local company that says, it's okay to love Erie, and it's in Pride colors. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and given what I was discussing recently about not going out to pride very much in my own city, uh, the irony is not lost on me. So, uh, so I've been thinking a lot about, you know, the significance of where we are in time. And technically, if there was an episode in which we were going to discuss Stonewall, this would probably be it. Because we are just upon days away from the literally 50th uh, anniversary from when Stonewall did happen. Mm-hmm. But we've talked about it before. And I kind of feel like we don't really want to beat that. That horse. The... Yeah, like, you know, kind of go over that topic and go over it and go over it and go over it. And while it's important for new individuals who are not aware to learn i do not think that we are necessarily the resource for that educating there's a great many other things that will be happening i imagine um there's you know documentaries which are preferred to movies um about what happened with the riots back in the summer of 69 over those uh few days so i thought instead um and and instead of rehashing 50 years of what's happened. Uh, You know, because the reality is in measurements of time, when it looks at like what happens in humanity, you might say that a lot has happened for the LGBTQ plus community in 50 years. 
others might say that not a lot has happened or not enough has happened. So I thought, what if we ask the question, if we attempted to use a crystal ball, oh, look, I happen to have one handy. So let's <laughs> say we were to look into the crystal ball and forecast what may happen in the next 50 years to come. What do we think that would look like? Do we think that as progress continues that it will merely be a doubling or will it be like a multiplication factor? Like what we talk about when it comes to technology, like every, and I don't know what it is off the top of my head, every so many years, like the speed and the processing and the like size of memory, you know, duplicates that kind of a thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, is, is that practical to think of it that way? And you know, what, what do we think it will look like in 50 years? If we are all blessed to be around for the 100th anniversary, I will be in my 90s. I'm going to own this. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought of that as we were starting up the show. I was like, ooh, okay. <laughs> but it, it's very doable. It's very feasible. It is possible. It's entirely possible. We don't know what will happen. You know, we might be able to get rid of any particular diseases that might be affecting us that could potentially, again, prolong our lives. Right. So that being the case, if we were to forecast and kind of look ahead, what do we think? I think there's kind of a couple of possibilities. What do we think is a reality of 50 years from now? What is a hopeful future of 50 years from now? Mm. And what is maybe a not so pleasant possible 50 years from now? Is mm. If you want to be fair, there's like probably like a, a, like a spectrum, a, a, <laughs> a, a thumbs down, a thumbs neutral, and a thumbs up, I guess. Uh, the good, okay. the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. There we go. So um, let's... Go ahead. Well, I mean, do we want to start with the good, the bad, or the ugly? I mean, which one is ugly? Would ugly be like the truth? Well, that'd be... <laughs> <laughs> Would that be reality? <laughs> well, if, if we're keeping on a current trend of where we are today, we might be able to think about, like, the ugly easier. I, I personally would prefer to start at that end and then work our way towards... The, the bad, you mean? No, I bad I to good. Yeah, ugly is kind of the neutral thing. It's like eh, nothing's really great. It's not bad, <laughs> but no, not really. Good. Well, so I mean, I just said good, I bad, and ugly because there's a movie called The Good, Bad, The Ugly, and when you say three things, and there's good and there's bad, yeah. You know. So I suppose it's the good, the no. bad, and the uh, game face. I don't know somewhere. Like and the meh. Yeah. Um, the good, the bad, and the eh. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, in terms of bad, I think just what we're facing today obviously can get worse. True. I think the super obvious is that everything reverses. Mm hmm. And we go back to where things were. Yeah. Or, or, or more extremely than where they were. It, yeah. It, it, tell me if you you, you think we're kind of this is like looking at the past to kind of help possibly predict the future here so with the supreme court ruling on gay marriage mm -hmm. i suppose this is very united states centric so just just go with me here and it seems like the far right has started to kind of get the like whoa they just made a great leap this is not good and are starting to really push back on that um and we've gotten to be like yes success and kind of gotten complacent after that right mm -hmm. we were talking about this before right so it's it's possible that in the future we start thing depending on on how things go you know things might start really slowing down not necessarily because we're not pushing it's just they're starting to really push back and it could be in 50 years we're literally at neutral where where it's this kind of like little uh, uh back and forth pushing uh push and pull of where we are of where we are right now yeah I mean, I think this is this is for me the the 
bad outcome would be to say we no longer have separation of church and state Mm -hmm. governmentally what we're seeing is more like blending and confusion about these issues where spirituality is being given a seat at the table when it comes to our politics and to our decision making processes and what is legal and what is illegal like because we're using the law to justify justify moral like concepts mm-hmm. as opposed to like a humanity so that would be my concern is that the government would make a shift in that direction and say that religion trumps like human rights or human dignity no pun justice intended. that kind of stuff not at all um <laughs> but one one of the things i think we can all agree on is our hope hopefully and reality will be that this is the last year <laughs> um, <laughs> just <laughs> one more year like, 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 Techni- well, technically it's like a year and a half but this but i mean this this is to go to say to something though like um like I was watching a clip recently, and just bear with to hear this out. Mm. Lady Bunny was recently being interviewed and, and talked about the Wig HBO documentary movie that's mm-hmm. uh, being done, and was asked a question about like how much RuPaul's Drag Race has affected like pop culture in terms of like how people see entertainment and how they treat people. And Lady Bunny was like, "I don't blame RuPaul's Drag Race at all. I blame reality television." Like, and then she just goes on this little brief tirade and kind of says. Because look at what's happened. So we created these individuals that said it was okay to be a problem. It was okay to be messy. It was okay to be a pain in the ass. Like it was okay to like not get your way and to raise a temper tantrum and all this kind of stuff. And then we elected a reality star to be like the person who leads our country. Mm-hmm. Someone who's like, gone by, bankrupt. By, uh, I don't know how many times. Well, but it was. I mean, it was really succinct and short and well put. And I was kind of like, damn, like cannot disagree with that line of thought about how we let somebody who was well known in one aspect but not in other aspects become our political like keystone so to speak and so my it was all charisma well my thing is like so yeah yeah we have like another year so in talking about politics we're gonna have a presidential election so in 2021 potentially that administration would change but that doesn't do away with the entire quote-unquote groundswell of individuals who feel like emboldened or more outspoken or more impassioned um also in a, in a social media kind of way i saw a tweet going around which i i think i ended up retweeting because i really like this concept which was megan mccain who's on the view who is john mccain's daughter the senator who passed away and is an out republican um, finds herself in the middle of a lot of like issues because she's very progressive in terms of her life as to how she lives it and views people, but politically is still considers herself a Republican. So she gets a lot of like backlash for that. What I find interesting is that recently on the show she was quoted as saying this because there was a discussion about this whole issue about like the presidency and who supports him, and she simply said they support him because they fear the same things he fears. They support him because they hate the same things he hates. Mm. And I was like, mind blown. Okay. Oh. Did, expe- did not expect that to come from her, but it was like so crystal clear in a moment of they're like, I don't find dis- I don't have a disagreement with that statement as a theory as to why we're seeing what we're seeing because people feel impassioned to follow that individual. It's no different on the other side. I think during the previous eight years of our administration here in the U.S., there was a lot of people, myself included, who believed in the, yes, we can, like, concept, like that we can achieve uh-huh. things, we can work towards things, we can do that stuff. But we don't have that message now. We have a, we instead of a positive, proactive, like, progressive, ev- evolving message, we have a retro like kind of message a negative message a fearful message Mm -hmm. in which we're worried about like people taking away taking away taking away you just fill in the blank like Mm -hmm. and and how that negatively is affecting us instead of being an open opportunity kind of situation we're looking at it more like we need to close all our doors and windows and fear it for our lives kind of a thing Mm -hmm. that's just an interpretation and so i think in 50 years to come, if that if that becomes more the mainstay, then we could very well potentially see things go in the other direction, 
which to me would be bad. That would be us looking at our lives and, and living in closets again and being quiet and not being out and, you know, being concerned about the, the future of what our communities could be. I don't think that will necessarily be the case, but I think that could be pretty bad. And if you want to go very extreme in terms of bad, we could talk about the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, like I, like my worst case scenario it's not, you know, it's not 50 years from now. It's like five, 10 years from now. Like it's that, and I feel like we're already on this trajectory. You know, we've been dealing with some issues with immigration, and and um, women's rights, and you know, body, you know, body autonomy, and all that stuff. And we've been dealing with these things, and like you said, we've been going backwards in a lot of ways. You know, for a lot of things, and I, my fear will be that we will continue that trend. I hope not, but my feel that we will continue that trend and we will be in worst case scenario where we were, you know, 50 years ago or, you know, 30 years ago, you know, where, <clears throat> you know, there will be all this, for lack of a better term, darkness, you know. Um, women won't be able to, you know, have any real rights anymore. Gays definitely won't. Um, and we'll be back to trying to fight again for the right to exist. Um, again, these are like the, like the fear, fear parts, like the, like things you don't want to really think about for too long because they'll eat it eat away at you. Um, but I do think about stuff like that, you know, um, I've been, you know, fortunate or unfortunate enough to like go through Facebook and get memories of stuff from like years ago and realize like two years ago we had the whole, you know, not that it's gone away, but like, you know, police shootings of, you know, people of color and all of those things that were going on and having that be a reality to face potentially in the future. We, we know that there's still hate in this country and sometimes in, uh, around the world for so those who are different are not you. And that's where I could see like the worst case scenario going where that hate builds up to people being put in office based on fear of, of the other and then rules and laws and stuff being changed so that those others are removed in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Holocaust is one of those perfect examples of that. And it's not the thing you again. It's not the thing you want to think about, and you know you hope that history won't repeat itself. But there's a possibility. Well, and I think that begs the the bigger issue is because we've experienced such dire realities in humanity. I think there may be an argument to say that we'll never go back there, like that there that there's enough of a understanding of how horrible this was that we would refuse to allow that to happen again and yet i realize i'm like playing both sides of it i understand <laughs> some people are kind of like who really knows and understands mm -hmm. like the last of the holocaust survivors are dying due to mm -hmm. age and you know illness mm -hmm. they're re reaching a hundred years old you know and yeah. they're they're no longer going to be around to tell their stories and you know, that affects the reality of what people can connect with mm -hmm. and whether or not that actually matters to them. And like, I would not be surprised to find out that many young individuals in our community are not aware of the fact that we were ostracized and murdered in the Holocaust, that gay men and lesbians and trans individuals persons of mm -hmm. color we got our own designations in our uniforms and were separated out and put into concentration camps and murdered like the mm -hmm. pink triangle actually came from that correct yeah and but it wasn't if you want to if you if people want a yeah. good example or, or some sort of story in regards to that you can definitely look up um either the play or the movie of bent mm -hmm. uh by martin sherman i think it was uh, which is an amazing play, and um, uh, and it is like I actually read it before I actually saw the movie because I never got a chance to see a play. 
um, and when I was in college, and I just thought it was very, very power, powerful and kind of showed how the Holocaust is commonly referred to as uh, in regards to uh, Jewish society, but uh, the gays were part of that too. Um, hence, uh, they were ostracized pretty much the same same way. They uh, their uniforms had the pink triangle to indicate they um, that they weren't Jewish. They were gay, and that's why they're pretty much in the same exact circumstances that uh, Jewish society were. So, if you think that hey, I'm I'm Christian, so that never actually affected my history or anything, but if you're gay, it affected you too. Right. I'm putting a link into our doc just so that people can make reference to it if they're interested to learn more about it. Um, because it wasn't just Jews that, you know, were um, affected by the Holocaust. I mean, there were lots of different categories of individuals, um, including our own. And so uh, to me, that's like one of the more extreme kind of situations that we could face potentially again in the future. Um, I'd like to think that as we've progressed and evolved, that that's not quite a possibility because more and more people are now connected to individuals and uh, know and understand that, like, we are part of everybody's families. We're part of everybody's workspaces, um, you know, and therefore it would not be a good outcome for individuals if we, you know, decided to take that path again, at least as far as the humanity. But I don't know. So, uh, outside of bad, um, I guess the meh, <laughs> or the neutral, whatever you want to say, um, uh, do you guys agree that it would be more of the same? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I... you're muted. Muted. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, every time. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you. Um, You're welcome. I kind of feel it would be a bit more of the same, but I also think there may be some potential changes. I, you know, the reality is while we have people that are taking away things, we also have a very strong response to that. You know, there are people trying and in some way succeeding to kind of keep things from going back to the dark days of, of history. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are getting put, are being voted in, things like that are happening. And I could feel that being the, the, the part, the good part of this swing. You know, there are people that are seeing and saying that enough is enough and are making choices and taking in the bigger pictures as opposed to just like, as you said, like with the, with the uh, Lady Bunny thing, like taking in like, that's who we don't like because we don't like that. You know, we're, you know, that's how we'll keep going with stuff. That wasn't Lady Bunny, that was the, anyway, McCain daughter. Anyway, but like, that's where I, I feel we are, we are seeing a lot of things. I mean, just the, um, what with the, the, the school shootings, and that after the one in Florida and the kids kind of like taking like dramatic, drastic action on their own and going forward with that, I could see that kind of being the thing. It's, people are going to say that it's not okay. They're going to shout, they're going to make a noise, they're going to make a ruckus. And I see that being part of this good upswing in that we are if someone is going against us or is going against things that are against humanity and what have you, there are people out there that are making a point to fight for the rights and keep things equal in some capacities. Um, obviously, our hope would be that it would remain that way and we wouldn't have to worry about it. But, you know, 50 years from now, I could see that being where things may keep happening, but they're just getting put out there and then the fires are being put out by you know those that fight against it right yeah I mean I guess it, what bothers me about the neutral neutral 
position is that like we would just feel like we haven't done anything for 50 years. Mm. Which I guess is what really would happen. You know, like if you were driving a car and you put the car in neutral, it doesn't really go anywhere. Like the only the only thing that happens is if there's any inertia, like any current mm-hmm. energy would would cause the momentum to continue, but eventually it just kind of fizzles out. And then it just kind of comes to a stop and there's nothing else. Until another like force comes along, I guess. Mm-hmm. This is the reality. So yeah, I mean That would be re- really disappointing to me in a way, only because I don't feel that the work is done. But to be fair, if you want to look at other movements, the work isn't done there either. It's true. Women do not have full equal rights. Persons of mm-hmm. color do not have full equal rights. Persons of other abilities do not have full equal rights. I mean, yeah. you know, nothing, nothing has changed on those fronts. In terms of, I don't want to say, I take that back. It's not that nothing's changed. We're not where we thought we would be, most likely. Yeah. During each of those times politically, in which we thought we were making big strides. Um, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's a complete sidebar. It's not really related. Have you guys seen the video of the guy on the airplane trying to put the luggage away up above? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I saw it again today, but the best response I thought was, and people wonder why there's a wage gap. Ha! <laughs> because it's a female flight attendant who helps him understand that he's not putting his luggage into the overhead bin correctly. Yes. <laughs> I have seen that, and I love it. It's just, it's kind of spellbinding slightly in a way, and it's, and I feel bad because, yes, by watching it, and laughing about it in a way you are like finding humor in the fact that another person just isn't getting it. What we don't know is whether or not this person has the capacity to understand how to properly put the luggage away in the overhead bin or, you know, if they've never been on a flight before. Like there's so many variables you just don't know. And I think a lot of us are presuming like, how could you not? No. Really? How could you not? do that? But then again, I mean, there's some other meme type stuff like, is this how bottoms think tops make it happen? I mean, like... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like, you're just going to shove it in. Wow. Um, <laughs> and it's going to fit somehow, some way. Uh, somehow it's, gonna, it's just going to happen. And, but like, right, right. The pieces will somehow connect. You're well, I mean, that's that whole thing it. about... Uh, what is this saying? Insa- the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Yep. Yep. Like different response in that case. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> just my mind just went to um, some recent interactions with where yeah, there are some difficulties getting things in as it were <laughs> and oh, are, are we, are just... oh, now I don't recall like trying to force it in but like <laughs> but like ladies and gentlemen welcome to the COL after dark moment of the yes <laughs> <laughs> we need a sound clip for Jeff <laughs> <laughs> sounds like brown chicken brown cow music mm. um COL after dark Mm-hmm. Something like that. So yeah. Oh, you can't hear that part. Hold on. I, I like it when I play a sound, but you can't hear it. That's great. Yeah, yeah that's the sound. There you go. <laughs> that's how I could do it in short notice. Nice. All right. Golf claps. Anyways. Uh, so I guess my feeling is. Bad would be bad. Mm -hmm. Neutral would be so neutral. Would also be be great. (laughs) Yeah. And then, um, so if we kind of forecast to the good, how much? This is going to be a horrible thing. So English people out there who like grammar cover yours, how much (laughs) gooder does it get? (laughs) <laughs> How much gooder does it get? Uh, so, it is. It is better. Yes. Right. Yes. 
Well, that, that that was actually a reference to an episode of Stargate SG-1, which probably nobody understands, but still. If you do, good on you. Um, You're better. Anyway. Um, <laughs> for me, the, the, the best things, I think, would be the not idyllic utopia, um, but would be like we don't have to worry so much anymore. If that makes sense. Like, you know, marriage equality stays in effect, at least for the United States, and maybe starts passing around, you know, other countries. We've, we've learned, like, typical or typically anti-gay countries are starting to change their output and change their minds about homosexuality, and it's kind of improving. So my hope would be that it would keep that trend where it's okay to be gay or lesbian or, you know, GLBT. Um, and where those people now don't have to worry or live in fear anywhere. You know, the fact that you are should be irrelevant. Right. Are the, um, the best, you know, in the best case scenario, it's not even thought about anymore. You know, we've gotten the rights. We, we're good now. Everything's on an even playing field. We're just treated the same where everyone's equal. That would be like the perfect world. I don't think we're going to get there in 50 years, but I could see us hopefully moving in that direction. Yeah. Um, and the only reason I'm going at that is, just, again, based on history. You know, it's taken so long for things to sort of start happening. It's going to take that long. It and keep it keep in mind stuff. keep in mind uh, the United States besides despite being so young and you would think we'd probably be more progressive than than many other countries in the world um we're very slow in the uptake in, on a lot of things true because like gay marriage has been around in other countries in Europe and especially for a long time a, a lot longer than than us and we've had the slow roll of a state here a state there we mm-hmm. had had some states that didn't go with gay marriage they went with domestic partnerships or whatever it was i don't remember for mm-hmm. a while um and, and until the justice till the supreme court ruled yeah um mm-hmm. this is yeah, we can't discriminate on the whole marriage thing when it comes to relationships. So, yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it, if if ideally for the United States at least, I can't really speak for the rest of the world because you know this is really the only country I've ever been to. Uh, although I've had a brief stint in Canada, but that was only going to the other side of the border of Niagara Falls, and that so that doesn't really count that much. Um, but ideally what I would like to see with the government is the government to really focus on the things of what a government should be really be doing of making the entire country successful, uh, making sure that their entire citizenship is healthy, that their entire citizenship is happy, um, and uh, m- more focused on that than trying to uh, limit or anything and that we're and show to the rest of the world that we're actually a very welcoming com- uh, country, which right now we're definitely not doing. And it, because if we get more, if we become like the place that everybody really wants to come to, I mean, that's going to make a successful country. We got a lot of land, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that we, if we were to project ahead and say, like, you know, we, we duplicate where we are now, then in theory, we would have full equality, and as mm-hmm. would the rest of the community. 
So it doesn't matter who you love, how you self-identify, that that would be accepted. And I guess we would move into a community, like a, a future, like larger humanity in which we would probably move to the neutrality of things, meaning like, like in language, some of the languages, and I can't remember which it is, like gender is a big deal and how they reference things which is why mm -hmm. it's kind of confused me because when i learned german and when i learned french which i don't really remember much of either um it confused me to greatly to be like this inanimate object has a gender and i'd be like but why like why is a chair this gender and why is a like table that gender like this doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense they don't have genders like <laughs> they're objects <laughs> but <laughs> That the reason I'm saying that is like I imagined we would move to a point where we keep things to the neutral. We don't make presumptions off the bat. Like the recent project I was working on, one of the things we have to ask somebody is how they identify their gender. Mm -hmm. And I was trying, and it's very difficult to rewire myself in the, the course of discussion, like talking with a person. It's easier when it's a third party. So, like, let's say that I'm talking to Damon about Jeff. It's easier to refer to Jeff as they, them, mm -hmm. throughout, like, the conversation for the longest time because I don't actually know. I'm not speaking directly to them. But if I'm talking one-on-one -on -one and I'm talking to Damon, <clears throat> I, out of politeness, we are conditioned to reference the gender with, like, uh, their, like, uh... It's not salutation. It's not greeting. I can't remember what the heck it's called. Uh, Honorific. Yeah, it's not their prefix. That like like sir, ma'am, sort Correct. of thing. Right. Or yeah. What is what is the gender neutral for that? Um, I don't know if there is one. That's the reason why it becomes a challenge because because well, and it, and here's the other thing when it comes to stuff that sometimes is used to be as the generic gender neutral ish sort of thing it usually ends up being the masculine version so like if if sir and ma'am are basically the same thing just one's masculine one's feminine um it's quite frequently i think in military society even the women are referred to as yes sir i could be wrong right no, people who've been 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 in the military please correct me because I admit, I've never been in the military. But yeah. um, I think um, that sir would be kind of like, would end up leaning towards the what is considered that. But the only problem is, it is still the masculine. It is not gender neutral. Which is also one of the problems that I have, have with the whole fact that for, those, for gender neutral people, we refer to them as they, them, which is really just a plural. And the only reason why we can use that is because they, them is actually gender neutral. It's just not singular. Well, and there's, there's some stuff going on with that recently about them being accepted as singular, even though we've grown up in grammar yeah. as them, as it all, those words always representing plural. Um, but yeah, like in terms of, of the honorific, like Mr. Ms. Ms. Like there is technically a written MX, mm -hmm. uh, which is meant to be non-gender specific. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it also notably came about in the late seventies, and I had to look this up online to even know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> just kind of wanted because I never even heard of it. I was like, "What is that?" So usually pronounced mix yep oh like without the eye yeah mm -hmm. but that's yeah. just like it's i remember like back in the are... i think it was like in the 80s or the 90s there was this big thing about like waiter versus waitress and supposedly a new word was being invented called waitron and i was like oh get real like that's <laughs> um that's like Wait, actor person? versus actress or comedian versus comedian um yeah, it's because we've always had because for the longest time it's always been that by gendered um, thing that no one had developed the words to we've, we've create grown that gender neutral society where everything is binary. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. 
Well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, the more I read a little bit online, and granted it is Wikipedia, to be fair, it says that the gender-neutral title that we were just discussing, the capital M, lowercase x, is widely accepted in the government of the UK and many businesses in the UK. Um, so perhaps it is like the future, and like you were saying, Jeff, we are just so behind the times. Um, and one of the reasons behind that, I try to remind people of, and I said this again recently to someone that's a friend of mine, I said, I think we always lose scope. And by scope, I mean, like, the bigger picture issue about how, yes, like, a country like Finland or Sweden or Switzerland or, like, just pick whatever, fill in the blank, is progressive. Like, they have 100% renewable energy or they, you know, have full, true, you know, gender equality, whatever you want to call it. The internet in Sweden is so much better than the internet in the United States. And who who started but, the internet? The United States. <laughs> Right, but Sweden is the apple pit of internet. <laughs> to Sweden, the United Sweden States. is yay big. Sweden is a single country. Mm -hmm. When you give it an equivalency to the United States, you have to pick a state. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's what true. people lose scope of is like we are United States, as in we are fifty of them, and we all do not get along. We're kind of like family. Like Florida's a cousin. Sometimes we visit the cousin, but only because the cousin is fun when the cousin is drunk. But then, then, the, then the cousin does crazy shit and it ends up in the paper, and we like we don't know her, like it's not related, <laughs> you know? Wow, <laughs> I'm just saying. So, who's the crazy uncle? Wrong. Uh, gosh, I don't know who the crazy uncle would be. Maybe Minnesota. <laughs> no, we we would no. be the Minnesota. Minnesota would be the lovely loving mother. I was gonna say Minnesota. I was like Minnesota nice. I was like the Midwest is very like stereotypically apple pie and comforting and whatever. So yeah, I don't know. Like like mm. they they would if if they're gonna be aunts and uncles versus uh, mom and dad, they're they're gonna be like the 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 uh, Minnesota Wisconsin like. Minnesota's the nice mother that brings you an apple pie and make sure you have your casserole and asks oh if you're, you've got all the things. It's just the nicest, sweetest person ever. And um, mm -hmm. Wisconsin She means is, well, but she doesn't always do well. I mean, they're, they're like the farmer, farmer wife and husband. And the Iowa is just the weird little child that they have. Listen to you, Iowa is the weird little child of them. Remember, I'm from Minnesota. Actually, we get, we had jokes where where it says, "Hey, hey, what does Iowa stand for?" Idiots on wheels ahead. What do you do when an Iowa ah. throws a grenade over the border? You pull the pin and throw it back. This is how things wow. come from for us, Minnesotas. Wow. We were mean Whoa. when we were kids. Harsh. <laughs> fuck <laughs> <laughs> and see we didn't like i live what we call the tri-state area like kind of i think you do as well damon between like mm -hmm. indiana ohio and illinois up here it's pennsylvania new york and ohio Kentucky. we never talked about each other like that way <laughs> like about states we talked about that as like small towns or counties so we would not we would not say so you would say the ohio same thing just about Florida like somebody in the next county versus state <laughs> well Right, but what I'm saying is, like, even though there was a state border near us, we would not talk about the other state that way. <laughs> like, that's... Wow. I don't know. Wow. This, this is me gro so, growing up in Rochester, Minnesota. <laughs> in the <laughs> suburbs I of the fifth largest city in Minnesota. <laughs> well, know. that just goes to show, like... like By like the way, were, just to say, for all the listeners out there, I don't believe any of that nowadays. <laughs> I just remembered the jokes and thought they were funny. But that, well, but that's true though. I mean, you think about it when you look back to the way we were raised in the time frame that we came up in the seventies and the eighties, like we as a, like a United States society was, was, we were assholes at times. Like, I don't know how else to say it, you know? And the more that our history keeps getting rewritten by discovering and learning things and people coming forward and saying, oh, no, 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 that wasn't the case. Like, no, no, no. Like this person talked to this person. This is how this thing came about. And this person believed in this. And that's how I created this whole campaign. And, but you know, mm -hmm. all of these things. And you're kind of like, oh, OK. Isn't that interesting? Because I was living it and didn't know anything about that. 
but that's what history is. I think is like a it's a a vessel to learn through and and but it's it's dicey because people write the history, mm-hmm. and unless we do a better job right. about documenting the history, then who's to know mm-hmm. what really happened? It all becomes yeah. It's always skewed to begin with. It's always biased, but mm-hmm. then it becomes more so. Uh, yeah. You know, an unfortunate kind of thing. So, I mean, that that really kind of speaks to like what the potential of the future could be, though, in another fifty years. You know, will will we at a hundred years out be celebrating the Stonewall riots the same way, or will we look back on it and say, "Well, we really had to fight back violently at that time, but we've evolved and we've moved beyond that." Yeah, that would be my hope. I mean, it's, like I would love that. But we we do have to think that the Stonewall riots was basically uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, which is why people got really pissed off and 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 rioted. And then after we got a chance to calm down, we started doing it more politically in in like uh, regular activists. Sure, there's been some violent occasions, but we we've, we've calmed down from it and and just kind of like been able to. To reevaluate and think through the thing versus, you know, having a violent reaction to something that was awful. But it, it sparked the case to do that. And, and that's how we were getting to where we are today. And it's more of trying to keep that momentum and trying to have people understand more about... Uh, who we are that we're not going to threaten their lives their own lifestyle with our lifestyle for being who we are because you're being who you are but we don't really care about who you are as long as you are who you are and you let us be who we are if that makes any sense whatsoever to a point I'm just rambling (laughs) Damon you were saying sorry no I'm good So I think that one of the things that we would look forward to is that we get to a point where we say, okay, we've recognized that like we had to, we had to take probably extreme actions in some aspect to get our voice heard or to have any stamp of recognition, I guess, Mm -hmm. uh, would be one way to look at it. And that's one of the things I think that people find difficult. You know, they look at circumstances in which people, like right now, one of the biggest conversation points that I think people go back and forth about is like, why does there need to be pride? And I see this a lot on social media about, you know, why why do we need to have a parade? Why do we need to have a festival? And it's like, well, if you get things automatically granted to you and you never question them, mm-hmm. One th- one theory or one thought process is then you don't have to stand out to be represented. It's that mm-hmm. simple. Like that's why there is not, at least currently in my city, a white male pride parade. <laughs> Do you know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was trying to think about how to phrase that. Like, you know, that's... yeah, it's it's. It's easy to think that you don't need something when you've never had it to had to want for something. Right. If that makes sense. Like it's you know, and you know, differences, whatever aside, life you know, life go you know, whatever you know. When you've had to, when there was a point in time when your very identity was called into question. Your your life as a human being was called into question. Then you kind of have a reason to like be like, no, I am here. There's a reason I am here, and fight for that. Sometimes to the more violent end, you know, way. Um, and because of that, yes, is it we we now in the fifty years since then, you know, we've now had to. We, we do it now 
as sort of an honor and respect to that in some ways, yes. And also to realize, make people understand that we are still here and we do have rights that we are looking for, we are still trying to fight for. Um, and we're also trying to fight for others who have had similar issues or similar fights that we've not yet been able to fight for yet. Um, on, you know, on that scope, like just, you know, one of the things I like, and I, I know we were talking earlier about, cause I just had my pride and I will be talking about it in a couple of weeks, but one of the things I really enjoyed was in years past, the protesters at the festivals have always been kind of, they're always going to be a constant, you know, they're, but they've always been like a larger group, a large group of them. And this year we had three, no, oh. maybe four people. And, and that just go to me is showing that on, on top, where we had like thousands of people in, you know, watching the festival or in the parade, watching the parade or in the parade. And that just says a lot to me about like where we've been going. And I hope again, that we stay on that trend, you know, where that protesting is stamped out and people can just allow us to be who we are. And I think we're very close to that being a thing. Yeah. I mean, that's, there's, there's a whole lot to be said about that. Like about like freedom of speech and representation Mm -hmm. and people being able to have a presence and that kind of stuff. I will say like Columbus pride, when I went to it a week ago, I don't remember seeing any protesters. I know there were some. Which was weird. Mm -hmm. Only because of the environment that we are in now, I kind of expected, like, to see some notable standouts of some sort. Me too. And that wasn't really the case. Now, granted, supposedly, I had heard that the um, attendee count was, like, two million or something? Uh, right, which I was like, dang. Um, which I guess is possible. I mean, like, yeah. I, I, I did not do a head count. Um, <laughs> I'm not doing a head count either. I got time for that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, it would be, it would be good, you know. I guess in in another fifty years to look at the situation and say, we've not only expanded the community in a way that, you know, I mean, maybe that is really that begs the question of like, what is the goal? Like when the riots were created, the goal in that moment, I think was to stand up and say no more. Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. Right. And then, you know, as the saying goes, it was, you know, the, the glass, you know, breaking heard around the world or whatever. Um, So like, if, if that's the case, you may never know when you start things up um, what is to come, you know? And I think that's always, like, I always am intrigued by the fact that people are like, oh, I always had this grand plan from, from the very beginning. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting because I find more often than not, people don't, right when they very first start, have that. Like, that might come naturally over time and be like, oh, well, I'm going to do this thing or whatever. I mean, like, I think with this way, David, like with the Game Men's Chorus, I don't think it's mm-hmm. Cincinnati when they started that. They were they were like, oh, well, we're going to be, you know, doing, you know, six concerts a year and we're going to be going to Pride and blah, 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 and traveling around and blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. I think at the very beginning they were kind of like, hey, can we get some people together to sing? Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> to practice. Well, for each... Put on a little thing. Yeah. yeah. There was always... There's a there's a wonderful history to, to the gay men, men's choral or gay choral movement that's, um, that's out there. There's a lot of more story than just that. It's a lot of... Um, again, for many of us, creating the safe spaces um, to be who we are, a la like our bars and 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 restaurants and things like that. Um, you know, um, to add on to that, it you know it becomes more you know amazing to see that there, now since then there have been their choruses all over the you know the world. So. You know, it's it's everyone's story is going to be different, and I think that's part of the. Um, joy and pain of the world we live in. Right. And and so I think that we could look at it in the future and say, okay, well then maybe the goal is that we get to this 
true acceptance, meaning everybody is accepted for mm-hmm. who they are. Like, and we don't, and we don't question things, and we don't approach things from a binary concept necessarily in the beginning. It's just, you know, this is this is this individual. This is how they represent themselves. We just accept them for who they are, and we don't really like try to box them in or label them or compartmentalize them or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to take a long time for the mind to, for people to adapt to that. I mean, I, I look at it this way. It took a while still to this day for people to be like, oh, a woman has rights. Yes, a woman has rights. Technically, all of us have rights and they should all be equal. Got the mm-hmm. Um, You know, <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, I, I feel that way. That's I think part of the issue that I look at is, you know, we we recognize that we have room to to grow into and things to do things to achieve i guess um and where that is and what it'll be i don't necessarily know i'm very curious to see what that is mm-hmm. you know the past couple of years there's been issues not issues but there's been discussions conversations about adapting the pride flag um it's mostly recognized as six colors originally was eight uh the city of philadelphia made their own version for representation of communities they felt that weren't included. Um, and since then, there's been some other modified, like, suggested formats. Um, I think it's interesting, you know? And yeah. and, and mm-hmm. I think we're, we kind of get a little stuck, maybe, is when we... Um, <clears throat> I don't know how to say it. Like, aren't willing to expand our concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would, <clears throat> I admit I would probably feel the way if someone came forward and was like, oh, I think we should change the bear pride colors and flag. Uh, okay. Like, you know, <clears throat> let's hear it out. <laughs> yeah. What is it that you want to change or add, add, adapt, change, swirl? I don't know. Something. Yeah. I don't know why I just said swirl. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people when it comes to like, let's change it to be more inclusive. And then I'm thinking, well, isn't, like overly inclusive to begin with if you think of what the colors are supposed to be standing for um but i can understand where where it's like you're when you look at the other specific pride flags um the colors are different and like the the trans flags is pink and it's more like pastels um pastel blue and pink and white uh while in the bear flag has everything from white to black to brown and uh the the leather flag has black on it and then just this different shades of blue um and then when you go to the regular pride flag you only have the basic rainbow colors and because those colors aren't exactly representing the colors that are necessarily on those other specific pride flags right i think that's where people are not feeling as included it's like well i don't see a part of my flag on the general pride flag but when you think about oh. it right. but when you think about it you could say no all those all those are represented on there there's yellows bears you, you have a blue with a little darker blue but it's blue, uh, which could go for both uh, 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 leather and trans because it's, they're just different shades of the blue that's on there. Um, if you're looking at colors, but if you look at meanings as to the purpose of the meanings, I don't remember off the top of my head everything. Right. It is about being, uh, in general, the, the general pl- pride flag, the rainbow flag, is really meant to be about inclusion for everybody and i don't remember what the specifics are and there isn't anything specifically saying anything about gender or sexuality in the actual right uh uh, pride flag colors what they what they stand for so changing it i don't think is necessary but i can understand why people would like it changed so that just when you look at it you feel more inclusive besides thinking back on the meaning and being making that justifications basically what i did as to uh 
uh, what every, everything is. Uh, so I could understand a change. I could look at concepts. I don't think it's necessary, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. I, I think that my, my whole thing is I think there's room at the table for everybody. So I'm more mm-hmm. proud of the fact that my local pride organization, when it comes to pride season, like last year they did a campaign where they basically put up like, I don't know, 30 some different flags. Like, so there was, you know, the pride flag for the asexuals, pride flag for bisexuals. I mean, like they, and they purposefully were trying to educate and be like, you know, in case you weren't aware and you see these flags, that's what all of these things mean. Mm-hmm. And I appreciated that approach because it was more like, <clears throat> this is this is what represents that. I think of it kind of in this context, which is not a good analogy, but it's like we have the United States flag. So we have, mm. you know, 13 red and white stripes. I think we're starting to think white exactly white what I was stars. just about to think of. Yeah. And then each state has its own flag, flag of its own, mm. which is fine. Um, mm. I don't care what flag necessarily. Well, I take that back. There are certain flags that I'm not a fan of, um, but that's only because they promote hate. So that's yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> kind of down with that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you if you want that, but who knows? You know what will will come in the future as to what those things will will represent. And I don't have a problem with people kind of stating and wanting their representation, and they feel that that it's not there or it's not as significant in that case. I mean, that's how we got started on this whole thing. We didn't feel that we were being treated decently for who we are as persons. So why not, you know, ask for that or, or draw attention to it, you know, in a, and I guess in a civil way for to get that recognition. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know where we'll be in 50 years. It'll be interesting. I mean, I mean, perhaps- if it. Me personally, in fifty years, uh, I probably won't really care because <laughs> I'll be eight, 88, 89. Uh, Damon will be eighty nine, almost ninety. Gary will just be really old. Oh my god, girl! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> over ninety. I my my hope <laughs> again is. <laughs> I would like I would hope to see the acceptance and respect that we all would I think want if that makes any sense that we don't even have to like I I I said it before like we don't we don't have to worry or fret about being who we are um that's what my hope would be to where as a 90 year old year, year old man hopefully in a nursing home you know eating my applesauce and whatever, although I hate applesauce, but anyway, you know, but just like, you know, doing what I need to do. I feel so bad for you for not liking applesauce. Yeah. You know, the well, he's got 50 it. years to get used to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you just haven't had the right applesauce because my mother's applesauce, delicious. Or it is maybe it'll thing. just be a fruit popsicle. Yeah. It's a texture thing, first of all. So if it's negative, if, I'm if, a meat if popsicle. Has, like if it has um, pureed or whatever apple, I am probably not going to like it because I do not like pureed apple. Boom. Anyway, having said that, maybe you want the maybe you just need more <laughs> chunks. Like do you like apple pie? You don't like apple pie at all. I like apple pie. I like apple. Uh, See what if it, what if you the, just take off again. take off the crust and just have the apple pie filling? Apple pie Jeff, filling. You're missing the whole point. Different than applesauce. Having said that, my hope would be to be a 90 year old man in the nursing home, eating whatever. Apparently not applesauce, and being able to look back on this time and think of it as a. Uh, uh, call back to a less evolved time. Right. So, in my imagination, we will be in a gay senior citizen's home, because those do exist. Damon will be a part of the chorus. (laughs) Yeah. At the home. Part of the theater troupe. Jim will be doing costuming or something. 
Perhaps we'll still be podcasting. God help us. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, <laughs> Vegetarian Link. I, 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 Episode right, so, number 2,553. You know, we still call it Cubs Out Loud in 50 years? I mean, I think that's what the question anyone has been waiting for out of this entire episode. I'm sure they're all like, what the? Welcome to Dad's Out Loud, or Daddy's Out Loud. <laughs> Granddaddy's the... out loud. <laughs> Maybe we'll have some young whippersnappers take over for us. Polar polar bears out loud. We're, uh, welcome to polar bear polar out loud. I don't know. I love how Jeff thinks he's like you know toothless and. <laughs> I'm not doing it toothless, right? It's right. just I'm old. Right. right. I'm turning right. into Statler Waldorf. <laughs> but we'll, we'll have that we'll we'll like have some uh 20 30 somethings actually be doing the podcast but we'll be on there just like in a corner and be making uh annoying dad jokes during the entire time oh my god <laughs> we'll just turn into like uh, uh uh the the three-person version of statler and waldorf and just heckle right. from the audience I just realized something. I was listening to you, Jeff, but I actually, my imagination went to the fact that I would be in trouble being in a senior care facility that was all gays because if there were some like 20, 30 something gay cubbish like like staff members there, I would con- I would be the one that getting hauled in for like sexual harassment all the time. I just <laughs> I, I own it right now. And I'll be there like, don't worry about him. He's just a little senile. It's, it's just, <laughs> hey now, it doesn't mean I That's apologize. Bad. I apologize for old Gary. It's okay. No, Pat's on the ass. Papa Gary. Too back in the day. He, he's not interested. Pop, Papa Gary. He's not interested. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Look, I know who would be, but that's for later when he's off shift. Oh my god. Having said all that, welcome to the Hey, guess what, folks? <laughs> Maybe that's the end. Yeah. I think yes. we found our ending. Talk about where we'll be in 50 years. All three of us will be, be up in the northern part of the United States. In a uh, um, the the old gay man's uh, home, we're gonna have a bunch of queens walking around, just being like, "Oh, honey, don't worry about that." And, right. and um, uh, they'll have drag shows every Thursday, and <laughs> and of course, we're gonna have brunch every Sunday. Of course. And, and and we'll be listening to Cubs man. Out Loud with the next generation. <laughs> wait, wait, what did you just say, David? <laughs> I said it at, at 8 a.m. or at 9 a.m. Well, if, it, if, if we turn into stereotypes, we will get less sleep, be more awake, and be up earlier than most. So we might very well be kicking brunch at like 7.30 in the morning, like when no one else, you know, normally in their right minds would be up, per se. <laughs> Oh man! Well, if you hug around to this part of the episode, there you go. Hey, guess what, folks? <laughs> That's the end. Oh, plenty of ways to contact us. Hey, it's Pride season. We do have a out loud shirt that's available on our webs our Zazzle store at zazzle.com slash out loud. So proud out loud. See my shirt here. I'm not wearing the one, but uh, one thing you can actually do on those Zazzle shirts and do a little customization. Put your name in the back or something. So. Um, you can actually add stuff to it. It's kind of cool. Um, you can pop over to our web, contact us via many web places such as comesoutloud.com or our website. Uh, you can choose an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail, sexy, otherwise old man, Statler and Waldorf wise at 361 CL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. I would love to hear your version of uh, a gay Statler and Waldorf uh, heckles. Um, Aren't they already gay? I mean, we don't know for sure. We do not have time to go into that conversation. <laughs> not <in the> <laughs> uh, I thought they were a couple. Anyways. 
I mean, it's possible. Who knows? Anyways, uh, you can also find us on various social media outlets. That comes out on the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, on YouTube. Uh, you can uh, join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash Cubs out or telegram dash col. tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Um, you can subscribe to sometimes find out when this show is going to be airing. Uh at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col you have to do that on a computer it doesn't work on a phone we test it it as i said there's the merch store at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud get your proud out loud shirt today um you can also become a patron we appreciate all the patrons they helped us out recently you helped us out recently with the um two more years of um uh uh, uh, uh servers for the website uh, which also keeps the podcast running because that's where our RSS feed comes from. Um, and at patreon.com slash comes out loud, you can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us through Google Play Podcasts and Spotify as well. Um, you can find me anywhere in the internet as box that box poppy box cup box something or other. You can find me as Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites, or you can, um, or on Facebook, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as Gabriel seventy three. That's G A R B E A R seven three. By the way, hi Bruce. If you got this far on the video on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> it's a callback to last week's episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all. Can you imagine a, a gay Statler and Waldorf uh, as drag queens? No. They no. already are drag queens. They're just not painted and dressed up like drag queens. <laughs> wow. What? It's true. I'm just saying. Like, like, that's why I thought they were a couple. I was like, oh, that seems like a marriage. Like, all they do is snipe at each other all the time. You know, and just... They don't really snipe at each other. They mostly snipe at other like the performances. No, no, no. And stuff yeah, it, it's a combination. They 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 sometimes uh, 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 make some snipes. Although it's usually a snipe involving something that was happening on stage or somewhere. So, mm. so I suppose you're right. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a pattern. It always started talking about the act or about the audience or about the host, whatever was happening down below. And then at some point it would end up turning into something about the other one. So one of the reasons why, why this actually came to mind was the fact that I was watching the, one of the 2015 acquisition incorporated lives um, from PAX um, prime or the East. I don't remember, but one of them. And um, in, the middle, in the middle of the fight, it, they're they're in the dark under dark they're in front of this inn which it was made out of like the husk of a purple worm and on top of it are these two gargoyles sitting there and during the entire fight uh the gm is voicing them as basically gargoyle versions of statler and waldorf this is like uh, uh this big mechanized uh the beholder just dropped onto another uh, person and he says well I thought that rogue was just flat that's insane sort of thing it was barred I don't remember what the joke was it was hilarious and he just like periodically does this through just making some really bad puns it was hilarious mm. so you guys should, should look it up uh, there's a Entire playlist of the acquisition incorporated stuff on uh, uh, 
uh, the D and D YouTube channel. It's like it's live D and D with Acquisitions Incorporated. So, oh god, it's hilarious because these are the guys who make a uh, Penny Arcade, the Penny Arcade and PvP web comics, and some of their. Uh, geekery friends. Uh, Will Wheaton was on some of the first ones, and uh, Patrick Rothfuss, uh, which is an author, is now now on. So, hmm. uh, the, as of 2015, Work and Web shows up. There's others, you know, and they got the whole C team they're doing nowadays. So, there's even a source book for Acquisitions Incorporated being released. Um, mm-hmm. So, it's it's pretty cool. So. Yeah. 